Bruce Lawn. Am I a liberal, progressive, compromising Christian? That's what we're going to talk about on this video. I'm going to give you guys all the facts. We're even going to look at a scripture, so make sure you watch till the end. But before we do that, guys, my name is Ruslan. If you go into the description of this video, there's actually a lot of free resources, including a Master My Devo free Bible study course, a How to Find Your Niche course if you want to get into the YouTube creator space, and other free resources that you can check out. Link is in the description. So I usually don't make videos like this, and this is why. When I started uh, seeking and getting treatment for my mental health, one of the rules I learned is in conflict, you have to give up the need to defend yourself uh, because it, it doesn't really matter to defend yourself against combative people that aren't really hearing you out and are only half listening and creating straw man arguments. But because there are so many new people here and because YouTube is a fairly small ecosystem, I have to clarify some things and set the record straight on a few things. I also don't do these types of videos uh, defending myself because I think of the rule of 10. Some of you guys may have heard the rule of 10. Usually when you come into contact pe with people, meet new people, uh, third, three people will, will like you instantly. Three people won't like you and think you're full of crap. And four people will be indifferent. So there's a certain percentage of folks who consume YouTube that are going to watch me and just not like me. They're not going to like my background. They're going to think my camera's too nice. They're going to, they're not going to like my accent. They're not going to like that I'm into hip hop. They're, they're, they're going to find something not to like about me. So I don't, I don't really care to uh, like address those people because I think they instantly have a judgment and a bias for or against. And I don't care to adjust that. However, there's folks that watch multiple channels. Christian YouTube is a very small ecosystem. Everybody kind of uh, cross pollinates and supports each other in a way. And so I want to make sure that we just set the record straight on some things in, in terms of some of the accusations, if you will. And then I'll give you actual areas where we can disagree, where you can disagree with me on. And then we'll get into a, 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 a passage to kind of maybe give you a bit more insight in terms of what my philosophy of creating content is. So am I a liberal Christian? Okay, well, I think you have to define what you mean by the word liberal. When I talk to my progressive Christian friends, I don't seem to be received and celebrated as a liberal Christian in the least. If anything, they think I'm very conservative. However, if I am a liberal Christian, we have to we have to define what that is. So let me give you guys a, a way that I may be a liberal Christian, right? But if we're saying uh, what Galatians 5 says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And then if you scroll down to verse um, 13, it says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Okay, so if I am a liberal Christian, uh, I am after the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus to live a free life from sin. And if you pay attention to my channel and the overwhelming amount of my content, let's just pull it up here for a second. So this is my channel. Uh, shout out to all you guys who are subscribed. If you're not, you should hit that subscribe button one time. So let's just go through the last couple of videos. Mom scolds California middle school for indoctrinating 12 year old. Dear uh, activist, uh, alphabet activist, mom scolds California middle school. Okay, the video before that, it was about Big Sean's big mistake dealing with Kanye. Okay, now some of you guys think I'm too soft on Kanye. This is actually saying Kanye was wrong in the situation. And folks were like, why don't you preach the word in this video? You're not preaching the word. Had they waited a couple of minutes, they would have understood that the actual video went right into a Bible passage. <laughs> they just didn't have the patience, okay? And I'm going to get into why I do this towards the end of this video. So make sure you watch till the end. Uh, rest versus burnout. This is about uh, the dangers of hustle culture. Proverbs 6, specifically read, passage read from this. Uh, won't go to heaven with Elon Musk. This is about the eye of the needle, okay? And, and, and doing an exegesis of the eye of the needle passage. Uh, why we stay stuck. This is about breakthrough. Uh, this is embarrassing. I got arrested. Here's the truth. This actually is a video telling the time I got arrested and going right into a passage from Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, 
drag queen pastors talking about not conforming to the world. Why Jesus Part 2 is a gospel presentation specifically about sanctification. Why Jesus Part 1 is just a straight gospel presentation on why I follow Jesus. Blank Destroyed My Brain is me contending we stop engaging with P-O-R-N. And the video right after that, Friends with Benefits, is actually me taking Abba and Preach's video that is talking about Friends with Benefits and how people are afraid of labels and extending it to people who want to shack up and act like it's all good. So based on those last couple of uploads, I don't I don't understand how anybody could look at these videos, two full on gospel videos, right? Uh, two videos about sexual, well, three, three videos about sexual morality, uh, a couple of videos about financial literacy, videos about healthy conflict and boundaries, and videos uh, calling out alphabet activism. I don't know how anybody can look at that and be like, Ruslan, he's he's a liberal, uh, liptard, liberal, old, uh, uh, progressive Christian. They out here, they're fighting the coach war. I don't know how you could look at those videos and make that conclusion. So what it is, is, is it's coming, in my opinion, from an ignorant place of not actually consuming my content, or it's coming from a place of anyone who isn't as conservative as I am is a liberal. Now, that's a different conversation. Are there areas where maybe I'm more liberal than the staunch 5,000 point Calvinist who doesn't think women should make a peep in church? Yes, me, myself, much like Alan Parr, believe that women can do all things in ministry in a local church with the caveat that they can't hold a position of senior pastor or elder. Some may say that that's a liberal position. I think that's a very conservative position. That's a complementarian position. I had our woman's pastor on the channel and went by all the verses about women in ministry, and that is where we landed about where our church is. Something that's a liberal position. Oh my gosh, who sounds okay with women speaking in church? Ah, is that woman speaking in church? Ah, that's a, that, 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 right? Okay, cool. Okay, respect. So that maybe, maybe in that regard, I am not as conservative as the staunch thousand point Calvinist. I understand. And by the way, um, I'm not really trying to appeal to that person. We'll get more into that later on this video. So am I, am I a liberal? Am I, am I uh, progressive? I'm not really progressive in, in, in my politics. Uh, I'm not really liberal in my, in my politics. If you look at where, where I align on things, I'm a social, I'm what you call a social conservative. Now I am critical of people who tend to be um, on the fringe right of things that have, I think, good ideas, but poor execution of those ideas. They may have good policy, but terrible execution of those policies. And I hold those people to a higher standard because they claim themselves to be the party of God or the party of God and country or whatever. And I do think that's problematic because I do think conservatives have the better ideas, the worst representation and branding. And I think if you're trying to make progress in certain areas, that is not good. That's not helpful. Now, we're, we're going to get into the, the quote unquote compromising things because I think this is this is going to be uh, something that comes up, right? J John Peterson says, I believe it's your defense in Lecrae Kanye being soft on liberal Christians or celebrities claiming to be Christians. So here now here is a fair critique, right? Uh, and, I'll, and I'll get into this in a minute. If I'm affiliated with people or I am fans of of what God is seemingly doing in people. Therefore, that makes me compromise. So if, if anybody that's been keeping up with Kanye's story knows who Pastor Adam Tyson is, watched his interview in long form, I, I will say, man, I think God did something in Kanye's life during the Jesus is King era. I think he, he definitely got saved from everything that I've measured and everything that I've seen. However, that doesn't mean I'm just blindly devoted to anything he does. I've been consistently critical of multiple things he's done on the channel from his campaign. Uh, recently, the way he spoke about Big Sean, um, uh, all kinds of things, drinking on Drink Champs and, and making a spectacle of himself. Consistently been critical about that. Folks, don't watch that part of the video, right? They don't watch that part of the interview. And then I also say, sometimes we got to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's not the most articulate. He said he has struggled reading. Is being a fan of a artist creative who seemingly and professingly and, and seemingly showing some form of fruit that does that make me compromising? Okay. I, maybe it does. Maybe it does. But if, if you want to disagree with me on Ruslan, you're a fan of Kanye. Therefore you're a compromising Christian or you're soft on sin. I don't know how you can say I'm soft on sin. If you pull up these videos and you watch these videos and here I am, uh, encouraging people not to live together before they get married, not to be sexually immoral, uh, repeatedly giving people resources on how to conquer their sin of P-O-R-N. I don't know how that would make me a liberal. Maybe I have acquaintances and guests on the show 
that are more liberal. If we're going to look at the macro, what does that mean with regards to being a liberal? If anything, if anything, you can say I'm guilty of being a libertarian or a classical liberal. And a, a libertarian is someone who says, hey, let's let pe- let's let let's leave people alone. As long as people aren't hurting each other and hurting them and hurting themselves, hurting each other, right? Let's leave people alone. This is based on my view of First Corinthians chapter five, which we've covered extensively on this channel. Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. It's a church that is very uh, worldly, according to First Corinthians chapter three. In First Corinthians chapter five, it re- is revealed that they're having sexual immorality, and Paul is telling them, "Hey, do not." Uh, 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 judge those outside of the church, judge those inside of the church. So my view and the way I would intersect that is, hey, I feel all people should be treated with dignity, love, respect, and kindness. Most Christians do. Even people who are outside of our community, even people who might be a part of the alphabet community, even people that might be of a different political leaning, those people should be treated with dignity and honor and respect, and they should be left alone. In the same way, I've said before on this channel that though I got the bang bang jab, I think people who don't want to get the jab should be left alone. This is a classical liberal or libertarian view of how the government should and shouldn't intercede with your private life. Okay, so what people want to do behind closed doors, even though I may disagree with that, I don't think the government should intercede and say, you need to do this mandate or you can't do this or you can't practice this thing. Even though I may disagree with said thing, that doesn't mean I think the government should legislate morality. Now, let's move on to my video regarding pro-life and and, and, and the Texas law where I said, is this unethical, right? Sometimes people get confused and they say, uh, they, they don't understand that when you're creating a video and you're articulating another point of view and you're playing devil's advocate and creating tension, they, they, don't, they, they can't separate what, what is your position and what is the position that, that you're trying to represent accurately. So if you watch my video on Marcus Rogers, I give him the pushback, the, the left-leaning pushback. I give him that position. Why? Because I grew up debating. I grew up, and, and the best way to, to debate and understand somebody else's position is to be able to articulate it. So I can articulate a position I disagree with in a video to create tension and to help you understand the varying sides. And shout out to Colin Miller, who actually reached out to me and said, hey, man, I I was unclear about this. And he asked me very straightforward. He said, if you could press a button and make all abortion illegal, would you? I said, absolutely. Absolutely. That doesn't mean that I think that Christians shouldn't also adopt children and put our money where our mouth is. Because historically, that's what the church has done. Look at all the orphanages built. Look at ancient Rome. When kids would be put out that were not wanted, that had deformities, you know what the church did? The church stepped up and took over. So I think it's and both. I don't think my taxpayers should be subsidized to terminating pregnancies. However, I also think that we should be known by people who have our, our house in order, have our homes and families in order, have our finances in order, and that we should care for the widow and orphan as James chapter one describes, as Matthew chapter 25 describes about caring for these things. I do think that, I do think that. So if, if, if that makes me a liberal, uh, I, I guess, historically is this not what Christians have done. Historically is that Christians have not ran the orphanages. Christi- Christians have not cared for people. Christians have not led people. Christians have not taken take, take babies. But now all of a sudden, hey, you know, you, you, you wanna be pro-life, which is which I am, but you're not willing to adopt any babies? You want to be pro-life, but only in theory. You're not willing to actually do anything in your day-to-day life. I think this is when the world looks at us and calls cap and says hypocrite. You can say that makes me liberal. Okay, fine, whatever. Now, so that's that's in terms of the pro-life, pro-choice thing. I'm pro-life, unequivocally pro-life, unequivocally pro-life. So if your critique of me is Ruslan likes Kanye, Ruslan thinks people from the LGBTQ community should be treated with dignity and respect, even though he disagrees with their choices. And Ruslan thinks Christians should uh, adopt more kids and step up and be the fathers of the fatherless. Huh. Wow. Okay. Cool. I'll take all that. I'm saying what does scripture command the body of Christ to do and what has the body of Christ done historically? Cared for the widow and the orphan. So you can separate it and say, well, we're going to be over here and, and we're just going to say murder is bad. Yeah, yeah, murder is bad. And then we're, well, but, but when it comes to caring for babies, I'm not obligated to do that. Okay, you're not obligated. 
But should you? Probably. Yeah, probably. I'm sure there's family that you have that uh, may need you to step up. I'm sure there's people in your community, that single mom, may need you to step up. Yes, she's made bad choices. Fair enough. But if we're going to propagate uh, having more children in this world, which I think is good, I bring them into Christian, solid, stable homes. That is a hot take, apparently. That's a hot take because we ignore the, the James 1. We ignore the Matthew 25. We ignore all those verses about orphans and God being a father to the fatherless and all those things. Oh, okay. Cool, man. So, so, so just don't be irritated when then the world calls Cap and says, ah, you're kind of a hypocrite in this. If you're really about it, at least demonstrate with your actions that you're about babies. Okay. And if you're not, then cool. Right. So that's, that's my thing. So I, this isn't something I brag about. Like I don't put this on social media, but I do this actively in my real life. Not everything is for social media. Me and my wife take very seriously. Right. And I'm not saying every Christian is obligated to adopt babies. I'm just saying, Hey, maybe we should do more. Maybe it's a, a, a perception problem. Maybe we just aren't communicating those values that we've historically represented building most of the orphanages caring for most of the babies who weren't wanted. Okay. This is just history, church history. You can say, oh, well, this is my, 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 I don't want to take in no babies. Cool. Respect. You ain't got to take in no babies, bro. I'm going to take in the babies. And I recommend people get their lives in order and build their lives in a way where they have abundance so that they can take in babies. And that, and that is what's something that we talk about. Build scarce, useful skills so that you can earn more money so that your house and your finances can be stable and you could be a blessing to those who are in need. Because there's a lot of children out there in need. There's a lot of single mothers out there in need. There's a lot of people that made bad decisions that are in need. And so I don't want the foster care community to raise them. You know anybody that's gone through the secular foster care community? You think that's lit? I want Christians to step up and raise them. That's unfair? So we've addressed that. We've addressed how you can say, hey, you know, I'm a, uh, I am like Kanye. Okay, I like Kanye. I like, guys, I, I, I like Kanye, man. Sorry. I enjoy Kanye's music. I'm very excited that he apparently has some sort of uh, passion, zeal for Jesus. He's trying to work it out. I think Kanye's going through the hardest years of his life right now in the middle of a divorce, and I'm believing the best for him. But do not get it twisted that this is a Kanye big up show, because it's not. I've been critical of Kanye repeatedly, right? So, so don't do that, because that's goofy. The la my video from today is me being critical of Kanye. Go watch it, right? So miss, miss me with that. Miss me with that. Here's another one. Ruslan, you dressed up for Halloween with your son as a Toon Squad. <sighs> okay, man. I'm a liberal, guys. I, I dressed up for Halloween. There, there you got it. You got me. You got me. I, I, I think we should treat people who are from the alphabet community with dignity. I think we should, um, I like Kanye. Uh, I, I think some conservatives are loony. And uh, I dressed up for Halloween. You got me. I'm a liberal. You got me. You got me. You, got, you caught me red-handed. I dressed up for the Toon Squad. Okay. Now, this is more of the hyper-charismatic side. They, they, they think that I'm really far gone. Like, they think I'm really far gone because I listen to secular music, because I watch some secular uh, media, and because we dressed up uh, as the Toon Squad. They think, they think I'm just, okay, there's no persuading those people, right? I'm, not, I'm also not really trying to speak to those people, if I'm honest with you. And I'm going to get to who I'm trying to speak to and why I do some of the things that I do uh, in, in, at the end of this video. So there's those folks, right? There's, the, there's those folks. Okay. Okay. Um, Man, you got me. You caught me red-handed. I got, I got nothing for you. I dressed up for Halloween. We, probably, we have a Christmas tree, okay? We have a Christmas tree. We dressed up for Halloween. We, we celebrate holidays. You got me, fam. Let's, let's keep unpacking this because I think there's a passage that I want to get to to, to to address this entire philosophy that, that I have towards creating YouTube. And you guys think it's on accident. Like, you think I'm just winging it. I'm not winging it. I'm really not winging it, right? Like, like I take this seriously and I'm doing something different than other Christian YouTubers on purpose. I, th I think we have to understand that the, the, in, in terms of the, the hyper charismatic and the hyper Calvinist, there's going to be this tension here, guys, where there's going to be folks that are, that are all head and all doctrine and all theology, which just really means the study of God. And I think there's a time and a place for it. There's going to be other people that are all experience, all heart, all, all the spirit, 
right? And that that's a tension that I'm that I'm willing to press into and have those hard conversations. I've curated those conversations where we've had guests on this on this channel, like Isaiah Saldivar, like Pal- uh, Pastor Alexander Pagani, like Marcus Rogers. We're going to have those conversations. I think those are good conversations to have. And this is a quote from Pastor Alexander: "Too much spirit without the word is witchcraft." Too much word without the spirit makes you a Pharisee. You've got a bunch of folks that don't really care for what the proper interpretation of scripture and doctrine is, right? That's a slippery slope. If, you, if all of your view of scripture is interpreted through your experience and not through what the scripture intended, because there's only one interpretation of what is actually being communicated, right? And everything is, is, is interpreted through your experience and, the, and, and a philosophy and a view and a doctrine that's only about 100 years old. It's very dangerous. The other extreme is when everything is about approaching scripture like it's this textbook and this encyclopedia and this do and don't of everything. And those are the, what I would kind of assume is like these like theology sticklers who want to make sure everybody has proper doctrine, but there's very little heart, there's very little compassion, there's very, very little charity in, in, in that side. And so I think it's a good tension to have. So I'm going to press into these conversations. I'm going to press into having these conversations. Why? Because I'm both. Because I... I I'm a charismatic. I believe the spirit's moving today. I believe prophecy and words of knowledge and all these things can happen today. I also have sat and read the systematic theology books. I've, I've, I've gone down the reformed, you know, uh, cage stages, they'd call it. I've, I've been there too. Right. And it's, and it's a, it's not an either or I think there's an and both. I think it's, it's, and it's beautiful when we talk to each other. It's a lot of what I'm doing behind the scenes is trying to get brothers to talk to each other. Hey, talk to each other about these things. I want to see Reformed Brothers talk to Alexander Pagani or Isaiah Saldivar. And y'all chop it up about demons. I want to see those conversations, right? I want to see the Alan Pars and the Marcus Rogers have those conversations. I think it's good. The last portion of this, what may seemingly be an endorsement and a stamp of someone that is a believer when they may be in error on certain doctrine. Right. And specifically with Marcus Rogers, a lot of you guys are like, Ruslan, you called Marcus Rogers a believer and a brother in Christ. OK, so Marcus has been very wishy washy on the Trinity. That's a pretty big deal. I've already made multiple videos, at least three videos about how Marcus is an error about tongues. Most charismatics think Marcus is an error on tongues when it comes to the Trinity. I think there's this unrealistic expectation for me or for Alan Parr to dunk on Marcus Rogers because he seemingly rejects the doctrine of the Trinity. I don't know if he has or he hasn't, okay? There's been times where he said wonky stuff like Jesus is a thought. And there's been times, like in today's video, if you watch today's stream and watch him at 12 minutes, he says Jesus is eternal. He says Jesus was there from the beginning, right? So I don't know. Now, don't get it twisted and believe that I'm not willing to call out False teachers, because I have. When Brandon Tatum said Jesus is not God, Brandon Tatum's a heretic. I know you guys are like, oh, our beloved, our beloved Brandon Tatum, Officer Tatum, our beloved conservative officer. He's a, he's a heretic. When Bryson Grace came on this channel and denied the Trinity and denied that Jesus is God, he's a heretic. That is heresy. When China McLean said this, she is in grave error. Okay, and I've referred people to other to other videos, right? So I think it's important to distinguish that. Now, um, if Marcus rejects the divinity of Jesus or rejects the Trinity, that is heresy. There's no way around it. However, um, I haven't seen him do that yet where he says, I reject the Trinity, right? It's always more this like kind of slipping and sliding and, and saying, well, I don't know whether well, there'll be three thrones in heaven, two thrones in heaven or one throne there. I don't know, right? Um, but you know, I, I don't know. So is Marcus a brother in Christ? I don't know. He has some really sketchy doctrine. I'm, I did not like that snake video. That snake video is bonkers. I didn't like that. And I thought the timing of that was really bizarre. Okay. Timing of that was, 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 was really, really bizarre. This expectation that if someone doesn't flippantly call every single person a heretic, therefore that makes them a heretic. You sure you want to play that game? You, sh- you sure you want to go down that, that, that slippery slope of, hey, we as Christians, we as people on Christian YouTube, we're all about being known by what we're against. That doesn't sound like a good strategy. <laughs> that doesn't, and I, and I know, like, you should be about the truth. 
What is the strategy? The strategy. There's a strategy. I'm going to get to it. But that's the measurement of someone's spiritual maturity. That's the measurement of if someone is a, a follower of Jesus and is solid in their doctrine is their willingness to, to, to flippantly call every and everybody a, a heretic. That, that is the gauge on whether someone's a liberal or a, a conservative Bible-believing Christian. Is their willingness to call people heretics when historically I've done it, right? When it comes to outright false teachers or false teaching, I've done it, but yet, nah, you get, you. so here's the thing. I'm not going to make my content by, for what I'm against. I don't like doing that. There are videos where I'm clearly calling out things that are bad and, 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 and trash. Today's video about Dear Alphabet Activists clear as day. Okay. My video, my first video on Bethel, the first time I really, I really went like touched the algorithm about Bethel. Okay. Clear as day, calling it out, referring people to Mike Winger's video about Bethel. The issue is what is the point and how are you creating content? What is the point of you being on YouTube? Some of you guys, you, yo, you just want to teach the Bible, respect others you, you, you want to create videos that reach people for Jesus. That is what I'm attempting to do here. So, the strategy. Let's go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So, be as wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to the courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before the governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. So here, Jesus is saying, be as, what, wise as serpents and innocent as doves. I went to a great website that I recommend. Shout out to all the Reformed people. It's a Reformed website. Got questions. Here's their commentary on it. Jesus was using similes, figure of speech that compared two unlike things to instruct his disciples in how to behave in their ministry. Just before he tells us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, he warns them that they were being sent out like sheep amongst wolves. The world then, as now, was hostile to believers, not incidentally hostile, but purposely hostile. Wolves are intentional about the harm they inflict upon sheep. In such an environment, the question becomes, how can we advance the kingdom of God effectively without being predatory ourselves, meaning we becoming prey? Jesus taught his followers that to be Christ-like in a godless world, they must combine the wisdom of the serpent with the harmlessness of doves. Then it goes on, and then it goes on to, to right here towards the end. This commentary is, is brilliant, in my opinion. Uh, Jesus showed that he was as harmless as a dove, in every circumstance, he lived a pure and holy life. He acted in compassion, and he challenged anyone to find fault in him. Three times, Pilate judged Jesus to be an innocent man. The apostle Paul also modeled the wise as serpents, harmless as doves technique. Paul lived in dove-like innocence and good conscience before God, okay, and learned to deny his carnal desires so as to uh, so as not to jeopardize his ministry but paul also displayed his serpent like shrewdness when he needed it he knew his legal rights and used the legal system in his advantage he also carefully crafted speeches to maximize the impact on his audience in acts chapter 17 and acts chapter 23 paul also exhibited this approach to ministry he knew his legal rights you know how far he could push things. In Acts chapter 17, it also shows that he's very tapped into what the uh, Stoic philosophers were into and quoted their own poets. As your own poets say, in him we live and breathe and have our being. What, right? First Corinthians, there's a lot of references to secular scholars, secular poets of that time that he's using to tie in the gospel message. I'm not sure if you're following along. You guys are like, Rustan, just preach the word. If you didn't notice... I'm reacting to things going on in culture and most of the videos go back into scripture if you just listen long enough and don't get through the why is Ruslan talking about friends with benefits with Abba and preach? Keep watching the video. I'm actually contending for nuclear families and marriage. Okay? Right? So you see these titles and you're like, what's, what, what's going on? It, it's intentional. I'm not trying to reach the same Christian audience on YouTube. There's a lot of people that clicked in here, saw my commentary on Kevin Samuels and was like, wow, I don't know about this whole Jesus thing, but I really liked what you said about marriage and relationships and tying that into scripture, right? Wow, 
Like, I, 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 I didn't know how to feel about Mr. Beast, but you tied this into here. Wow. Right. So, so you see these videos and I'm tying them into things. Why? Because this is my approach to making videos. It's different than other people. I'm intentional about that. And I'm trying to reach a, a, a group of people that the reform thousand point Calvinist isn't reaching. Right. Calvin, uh, uh, Alan Parr has made all the, what should Christians do videos? He's made all the Christian Q and a videos. Those, those have all been made. And he usually makes really good videos about stuff. I want to talk about anyway. He does it before me. He does it much better than me. Why would I make the same videos? I'm telling you, I'm not going to make videos about the, all the heresy hunter stuff, even though I think there's a way to do it. I think Mike Winger is a great example of how and when to call out false teaching and false teachers. I'm not going to do that. Sometimes I do, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm not, I'm not going to make my content based on what I'm against. Instead, I'm going to show you what I'm for, and I'm going to tie in things that people far from God, people Jesus curious, people struggling care about, and pull them in. That's the difference. Some people don't understand that. That's fine. Let the cat out of the bag, okay? Be as wise as serpents, as innocent as doves. I don't even like having to explain this, but apparently there's some misconception that I'm this loose, liberal, progressive Christian. So let me tell you what my day-to-day -day life looks like. I am the Christian YouTube version of Ned Flanders. I live a very simple, boring life. I, I drive a 05, or was it, 06 Prius, okay, with a black bumper and the rest of the car is blue. I've been married to my wife for almost 14 years. We've been together almost 18 years. I've been at the same church for 20 years. Right? Like, I don't go to the club. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I, I, I'm, I barely listen to music. So, if I'm this loose, liberal, lawless Christian, where? How? Oh, it's because I'm willing to come and, and, and challenge certain status quo. Oh, it's because I'm willing to push back on certain ideas and ideology that I don't find helpful. Oh, it's because I'm not afraid of some of you. Oh... Okay, so then instead of addressing my ideas and what I actually believe and what the, the meat of my content actually is, which is trying to simplify this gospel to live God's ways so that we will be in God's will. How do we know what God's ways are? They're in God's word. We talk about this all the time, right? Nah, it's, it's easier to create the ad hominem in the text. And by the way, um, I'm not entitled to give anybody my platform or to talk to anybody about anything. So this whole notion of you, you should go talk to so-and-so about such and such. If I don't want to, I don't want to. I'm not entitled to talk to anybody. So, 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 so miss me with that, right? So, so this YouTube, Christian YouTube thing is, is a weird community, guys. It's a bizarre, really weird place. And there's different pockets and, and they're quick to turn on each other. And they're quick to, and it gets really toxic. Okay. And so, yeah, if you, again, if you look at my content, some of my earlier content, it's me talking to my atheist friend and we're talking about Jesus. It's, it's, it's interesting conversations that are tying things into a Christian worldview. And a lot of times into scripture, I'm not trying to do what everybody else is doing. I'm not trying to do it the way they do it. Right. So am I a compromised liberal progressive Christian? Well, that's, all, that's up to you to decide. I don't think so. I think I'm a simple, Bible-believing, Jesus-following, devoted Christian. Husband, father, been in the same ministry, been in the same community. There's, there's no scandals. You Google my name, there's, no, there's not a bunch of scandals. There's no, there's no sketchiness attached to me. Been with the same woman at the same church doing the same thing for decades. So you have to do with that what you will. You, you got to sort through that. You got to figure that out on your own. Um, but I wanted to set the record straight because I think some of this stuff is just utter nonsense. Hopefully that answers all of this. If there's any questions you guys have, if there's anything I wasn't clear on, um, by all means, I'd love to talk to you guys and answer any questions because uh, I, don't, I don't like making these videos because I, I don't need to defend myself. Like I really don't. I sleep well at night, like really good. I sleep very good. I get up really early in the morning. My life is amazing. My marriage is good. God's good, right? But I want to make sure that these things are addressed. Um, for the sake of folks that are new, they're going to search my name, hear some weird video, some two-hour rant about how much of a villain I am. <laughs> you guys can hear this stuff from me. There it is. All my controversial views summed up in one, how long did that take? 40-minute video, 30-minute video? There we go. King Stream Entertainment.
Bruce Lawn. Hey, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you find value in it, make sure to like, subscribe, turn the bell notification on, and check out the links in the description of this video. We have a free How to Study the Bible course and a free Find Your Niche training if you're looking to get into the YouTube space. Some other resources on the way there. So we'll see you next time. Appreciate you watching. Peace.